All right, so in this week's lesson, we're going to be learning how to play a minor key blues. It's played in A minor, and it's a standalone composition. No jam track is needed. You can do this on acoustic or electric guitar. You don't need effects or any of that. You can just grab your guitar and learn how to play this. And it's a really good exercise. There's a call and response element there, and we're going to be playing out of the pentatonic, so this is not anything complicated in terms of scales or chords. These are basic chord shapes that you already know. So I would encourage you to grab a guitar and follow along and learn this with me, and, and then you can use this to practice. It's a really good way to practice, and, uh, and then I'll show you how you can improvise with it too. We'll talk through that. So I've got this lesson split into two parts. In this video, we're going to go through the first half. If you'd like to learn the second half, as well as download the tablature for this lesson, you can get all of those things by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP427. <laughs> Okay, so before we get started in this, let me just say, if you like this video, uh, leave a, a thumbs up. That really does help, and also leave me a comment. I, I really live by those comments, and you know, people let me know what's working and what isn't. It's been a while since I've done a standalone composition like this, uh, and I kind of got more into theory and deep dives on certain topics, but then I realized somebody left a comment recently saying, hey, you know, I kind of missed those. That's why I signed up to Active, Active Melody. So, Leave a comment and let me know what you think. If these types of lessons are helpful or, or more valuable to you, let me know. Even if they're not, let me know. And plus, that'll help me in the in the YouTube ranking. Anytime YouTube sees lots of comments, they assume that that video is, uh, you know, is loved. So anyway, let's talk through this song. Now, the very first thing that happens, we're playing this, by the way, in A minor, and the first thing that happens is this minor pentatonic lick that goes... <laughs> We're going to skip talking about that just yet, and we're going to go right into the rhythm part. We're going to start with that, and then we'll get back. I'll go back to that. But the rhythm part that I want you to learn first goes like this. Very basic, and it happens throughout the whole song, so it, it makes it really nice and easy. And that's the call. If we think of this as a call and response, you can think of that as your call. Um, so what I'm doing there is I'm playing an A minor chord. You know how to play an A minor chord. Very basic, right? We start by picking the fifth string and then doing a brush uh, chord there, a little burst chord of the A minor. And notice I muted that right after I played it by resting my right hand on the strings. And then I went... So I'm simulating a bass line there. So for that it's the E string, the low E string, two strokes, and then my pinky goes to the third fret, sixth string, and then we go back to the A minor, or back to the A string, rather. So that's really it. It's like this. And if you want to palm mute that, where you rest the palm of your hand on the strings back here, it gives it more of a bass kind of sound, like a bass guitar. Now, even if you don't get anything else out of this lesson, pay attention to that, because you could take that right there, and then watch this. This is very cool. You could take just that call and then go into a pentatonic. Just go back and forth. Really good exercise to, to sit and practice kind of call and response. You're doing the call, your response can be improvised, it can be minor pentatonic scale, but it keeps you in time and it keeps you kind of thinking about improvising without having to get out of jam track. I, I find myself doing more of this kind of stuff than anything, and it's really a good way to learn. So you might think about just taking that and, and working on that for a while. But anyway, that's the rhythm part. That's the A minor rhythm. Okay, so here's how the song started. Okay, now that's minor pentatonic scale, pattern one. So we're in our good old home base, you know, I always kind of think of that as our, a good starting point. Pattern one, and I'm starting with a classic must-know blues like... I mean, that's in everything from Jimmy Page to Chuck Berry. It's like a 101 blues like... But we're, we're going to bar the first two strings here on the fifth fret, and then we're going to go to the third string on the seventh fret, and we're going to do a bar, or I'm sorry, a bend, and then play second string, first string. So it goes like this. Really cool lick. And then I'm going to do a pre-bend release on the 7th fret 3rd string. And then watch this. That's all we have left. 7, 5 on the 4th string, and then open 5th string. So all together. And then we have our A. And 
once you hit that open fifth string, it's an open string, so I can take my hand off the fretboard, reposition it down to this A minor. Now I'm into the groove that we just learned. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. You have the intro lick, and then we go into the, the rhythm part. Now this intro lick comes in on the and of one. So let's count this in. We'd say one and two and three and four and one and. Once I hit that A note, that's the one of the, you know, like the first measure. So the rest of that's just considered like a pickup, like pickup notes, you know, a little pickup lick. <laughs> Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go. This is a really cool move, super easy. I like showing these licks that sound good, but they're easy to play. This one, look at that. I'm just barring the first three strings on, uh, I'm sliding up to the seventh fret. And I'm doing a downstroke and doing an upstroke on the one string. And then going back to the fifth fret. So seventh fret, fifth fret. And once I get to the fifth fret, I go ahead and actually I want to play the, kind of the rest of that A minor chord. So I'm thinking of the A minor chord here using the E minor shape. If we're talking caged here, this would be your E minor shape, right? Or we're barring here, making our capo with our finger. Um, so that's what I'm picturing as I do this. I'm thinking A minor, where are my A minors? Oh yeah, I've got an A minor here. And actually I went like this. With, make sure I go back to that open fifth string so that I can come back down here and play the same call again. Got it? Just like this. Now, just a little sidebar as to what this is. When you're playing in a mi over a minor chord, just remember you have this. This is kind of a, a, a cool little takeaway here. Uh, if this is your minor chord that you're playing over, you can go up and play the, the minor chord that's two frets higher than that. So in this case, it would be a B minor. And I can also go down, down two frets, and play the major chord. So that'd be a G major chord. There's my, my A minor, and then there's my B minor. And what I mean by that is I have these chords I can kind of pivot off of. If I'm just sort of jamming or hanging out on a chord for a while, like an A minor. I can go back and forth between that A minor and G. Or I can go back and forth between the A minor and the B minor. Like that. And so that's just a general rule when you're playing over a minor chord. So just remember, you can kind of work that in. You can figure out the timing of however you want to do that. But that's what's going on there. Okay, so from the beginning we have... Okay, now the song goes to a C chord, and then it goes to a D, and then back to the A minor. It's kind of a cool little chord thing where you've got your relative major chord, so you've got your C chord, and then you go up to the D chord, which would be like your four chord in the blues, and then you go back to the minor one chord. So you have C, D, A minor. And uh, when I played the C, I didn't just, and by the way, that's a playing a C chord using the A shape. But what I did, but right before I played that C, as I went, little lick here. Let me show you this lick. So I'm sliding with my ring finger from the fifth fret to the seventh fret on the fifth string, and then playing strings four and three on the fifth fret. So I'm just going ahead and barring the first four strings there on the fifth fret. I'll talk you through this in a minute. Let's just learn it. So it's like, and then a hammer on to the seventh fret fourth string. And then we slide back down to the fifth fret, open, and then your A chord, or I'm sorry, your C chord using the A shape. So all together. Now that's a cool lick. And uh, I wanna say that's a Mark Knopfler thing. I don't know where I got that. I, I can't remember these things anymore, but I, I, hear this, I hear this lick used a lot, and I've used this lick a lot, and, and uh, you know, just about everything, because it's a really familiar lick off of this A chord shape. So when I'm going into a, a major chord using that A shape, you can see where my pinky is, barring in this case on the fifth fret. I know that I've also got that same chord played this way, where I'm playing the same bar there, same tr uh, little triad, but I've got the E note in the bass instead. So in this version, I've got the C note in the bass. In this version, I've got the E note in the bass. 
And so I kind of think of this as a fence and you got two sides of the fence and you can kind of visually that that's just how I think of it. But on this side of the fence I've got all these little licks I can do that are based off of the major pentatonic scale for that chord. I don't want to get too far into uh, off the rails here, but that's what's going on. Just learn this lick, connect it to that chord shape. That's how I'm going to say this. That lick is connected to that chord shape. So coming into the C chord, that's how I played it. So played the C chord and then played it in again up here, just the way I showed you. So I hammered on this time to that E note, 7th fret, 5th string, and played the chord that way. And then I took that and went, slid that up two frets, because that's my D chord. It's the same concept, right? There's your D chord using the A shape, so there's that side of the fence. You can also think, if we're thinking caged system, this would be like the G shape out of cage, right? Just sort of like the bottom chunk of that chord. Uh, okay, so... Play that, and then watch this. To get us back to the A minor. So what I'm doing here is, even though the A minor isn't happening yet, like we're not to that point in the song, I went ahead and jumped into the A minor pentatonic scale to pull us back in. And so that's actually what I did when I played over the C chord as, yet, uh, as well. When I played that... We weren't to the C chord yet. Uh, we were getting to the C chord, but I went ahead of the beat and played a little bit out of the C. So I played like a C major pentatonic thing. And so that's what I, that's just something you can kind of keep in mind as you're playing something, whether you're playing with a band or a jam track or even solo composition, you could always play ahead of the beat. I know I'm going from that D chord back to the A minor, so I went ahead and went, right? And just pulled us back with the lick. So that's a minor pentatonic scale going into pattern two, right here. So that's ninth fret, third string, eighth fret, second string, Quick slide back to the 7th fret, 5th fret, and then 7-5 on the 4th string. So, And then, look at that, there's the open A. I can take my hand off. That's the relief when you have that open string. And I can go right back into that same groove. Alright, so we've learned a lot so far. Let's take it from the beginning and play up to that point. One, two, three, four, one. So now we're going to go through the same chords again, same structures, and same cycle. And I started it off like this. And then we go into the call and response thing. So remember the first time we started with that little pickup lick. Now we've got another lick that's happening sort of in the same timing, but it's a different lick. Now this is kind of a Stevie Ray Vaughan style lick, I think of it that way. Um, still minor pentatonic scale pattern one. We're going to slide with our ring finger. Uh, to the seventh fret, fourth string, and then we're gonna go five, seven on the third string. Let me do that again. Now I'm gonna show you it this way, and then we're gonna add the first string in at the end here. So we got. That's what we're gonna learn. So we've got this far. We're gonna do a quick slide up to the eighth fret, third string. That's our blue note. Remember, that's not in the minor pentatonic scale, but it is in the blues scale. So we're gonna slide into that note. And then go back five seven five on the third string. So all together. Now what makes it sound really cool and classy, that kind of Stevie Ray sound, is when as I'm playing that, I'm playing that with my pick, but I'm using my ring finger to pluck that open or not open, but the first string, which is behind the fifth fret here. So I kind of keep a bar there. So it sounds like this. Hear that? That note is ringing out with it. It's droning underneath. Uh, the, the lick there. And when I hit that last lick, I kind of pulled it sharp a little bit. Go right back into the call, right? Okay. 
cool lick. Now watch this. Now that we've already talked about why that works. It's the same thing. Remember the first time we went A minor to B minor, back to the A minor? We're doing the same thing here. But I'm just using a different voicing. That's all this is. I'm big on chords and voicings. I mean, that's like, <laughs> it's just an easy thing to do. It's a great filler and it sounds good. So what we're doing here is we're playing um, an A minor shape here. I've got Look at the, it looks like, kind of like the D7 chord shape, if you look at my fingers. Think of the D7 sh shape you learned down first position. That's the shape that I'm using, but I've got my pinky on the 10th fret, uh, second string. So I've got those fingers there, and then I've got my index finger down on the 8th fret, first string. So that's another way of playing an A minor chord, another voicing. There's three main voicings, and I've covered that in other lessons. You can go to the lesson on the screen now if you want uh, more detail on that. But um, so there's your A minor, slide it up to your B minor, and then back. So we have, and then while that's ringing out, you hit your open fifth string so that you can get back to the call. So you have, right? The second time through then, Now we go back to the C, and I did the same thing. I just did one little extra thing. Right, same little lick we did before. The only difference is I did a little hammer-on, pull-off, hammer-on thing, trill. I don't know what you call that. That's a Clapton move. Um, sliding up to that fifth, uh, or sorry, the seventh fret on the fifth string. We go back to strings four and three on the fifth fret, and then that's a... I just picked that once. Notice my, my right hand. One stroke there. Ring finger does the hammer on to the seventh fret, fourth string, pull off, and then a hammer on to the seventh fret, fifth string. So slide back down, open, and then C chord. Same thing here as we did before C up to the D. And then I went. And that's just playing strings uh, two and three, seventh fret, down to the fifth fret. And then we watch this A little bend there. I got that from Chuck Berry. Keith Richards as well. So, but it's uh, seven, five, bend, both strings. I'm, I find it easiest to just pull that. Back to the fifth fret, seventh fret, and then we go back to the fifth fret. Let it go a little sharp, and then hit your A and then now you're in position to go back to the call. And that's really all there is to this. So it's, um, uh, let's, let's take it from the C. Back to the A minor. And that's where we're gonna end this first part. Now there's another part. It actually goes into a really cool part where we go into a D minor and uh, you know a whole second part, but I'm gonna save that for part two. Um, so we're going to back up and play through this one more time and so you have one final version of this. Make sure you check out Premium Membership if you haven't. I've got 10 years worth of lessons that are in-depth like this. There's courses. We've just got the, the Essential Theory course live. Lots of good information. And also don't forget to leave a comment. I always uh, find those helpful. All right, we'll take a look at this one more time and then we'll see you in part two. One, two, three, four, one. <laughs>